My name is Vahit Chitzos, part of Elite Mastermind Group. This is where we talk about Dr. Hill's principles and philosophy. Go ahead and do me a favor, introduce yourself to everybody. Let us know where you're coming in from also too. Ian Koniak coming here live from Los Angeles, California. Great to be on the show. You got it, brother. It, it doesn't happen that often, but I think we're in the same vicinity, so I don't know why we're doing it on Instagram. We should be, doing it <laughs> we, should be we, we should be getting coffee or doing it in my, my home studio. I'm right here in El Segunda, so pretty cool. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. I'm in Woodland Hills, so I got my okay. own studio too, so yeah, we'll find out who's who's smaller and then we'll go over there. Good <laughs> stuff, man. I like Woodland Hills. So let's dive into it. When did you start with Thinking Go Rich book and the philosophies, and how did you get introduced to it? Well, I've been big in the personal development space for a while. I've been part of a mastermind. And last December, um, uh, we were doing book recommendations. And a buddy of mine said, you got to read Think and Grow Rich. This is one of the best books of all time. And this was, um, I had already been kind of manifesting and, and doing a lot of the things in the book, and I didn't even realize it, right? So he told me in December, read this book. Um, and on the way back, we were in, in Costa Rica in a mastermind. And on the way back in the airport, I saw the book. So I'm like, okay, this is definitely worth, you know, worth getting. And this is the sense of so I, You need to start reading it. <laughs> I, I, re I read it immediately. I started in, on the air, airplane from Costa Rica back to LA. And then I had finished within a couple weeks. Then I picked up um, Outwitting the Devil. And that also was... was just a game changer for me. So I, I didn't realize, I mean, this guy's the father of, of uh, personal development. A lot of the things that I've been doing, um, I, you know, he had been uh, preaching a long time ago. And so I really changed my routine this year and started incorporating a lot of his direct teachings into my year. And it's been now eight months since I've been living on a daily basis with, with some of the things he teaches. So when you initially started reading, what were one or two principles that popped out to you and you're like, oh, I got to go implement this, or this has been the missing link, or I need to add this over here, or this makes sense. Yeah, I think the first, the first principle is um, the visualization, right? Every single day, visualizing um, what you want to get out of that, out of that day, right? And, and for me, what I do in the morning is I say some affirmations, and, and I repeat it every day. And, and I think about what I want in my life and what I'm going to do from a um, you know, perspective of getting there. So just imagining yourself in a successful situation even before you're there. So I imagine myself um, producing videos every day on Instagram and sharing my gifts to the world. Now, I've seen some of your videos, man. I yeah. see some of the scenery and some of the videos. And you don't hold anything back. I love it. I, I don't hold back. I just started in March, and I'm almost at 10,000 followers. I'm just doing this for, for sharing others. So I say to myself, every day I will use my gifts to serve others and maximize my impact on this planet. And for me, just producing a video every day, right, is part of that, that gift. The second principle is really def definiteness of purpose, right? I realize my purpose on this planet. I work in sales. I'm an entrepreneur. I um, have a successful business. But I realize my my purpose is really to inspire and serve others through, through my example and through my leadership. And so being able to tap into that, remind myself of what my purpose is, and then take actions that are aligned every day that are supporting that purpose, not just having it in my head, but actually doing the things that are, are in alignment with that ultimate vision. That, that's really been, been important, too. And then the final concept is just drifting, right? His whole idea of drifters that really don't have definitive purpose, that are products of their environment, like that, when I see myself drifting, or when I see myself getting too prone to things that are external versus internal, I take a step back and I, I remind myself of the big picture and, and make sure that I'm not doing things that are more in, in um, you know, more drifting versus actually being defined and, and um, specific with my purpose. So. Yeah, you see a lot of people just going through the motion of every day, but there's no goal, there's no, there's no outcome, there's no definite purpose. You know, definite purpose, I, I got to let you know, it's a very, it's a big concept for a lot of people that are not accustomed to reading self-development books. However, yeah. initially, it did scare me. And, and the reason why I say it scared me is I had to literally sit down and find out what I want to do within the next 20, 30, 40, 50 years. And that to me was a scare. I was like, holy shit, what if I get it wrong? Like, yeah. can I make a U-turn? Is that okay? Like, you're asking me to sit here and make a decision for the next 20, 30, 40 years, which is huge. 
it was huge for me at the beginning. I was like, wow, that's a big commitment, number one. Number two, I don't know if I trust myself that much to make that decision right now and say, this is it, all in, planted my flag, do or die, I'm going to make it. I was like, okay, time out a little bit. Let me, let me, let me look around, see what is it that I like, what is it that I want to do, what is it that I'm passionate. Then I change it. But then, as I got older, and I mean maturity level of reading the books and materials, I realized that I could have a definite purpose and goals for this coming year, for this physical year. It wasn't just lifetime. So when I realized that for myself, you know, obviously a lot of other people were telling me, but that doesn't do anything for us. We have to internalize it, and we have to come to peace with it on what is it that we want to do. So when that happened to me, it was like, okay, so next six months, this is what I'm going to focus on. In this next six months, this is it. Now, I do have one big grand, uh, granddaddy of all goals, which is cool, but I got a lot of mini ones in between. So I don't know if you experienced that. I, I, I get scared when we talk about one of those big ones, definite purpose for lifetime. Yeah. I don't know. That's too far out. I like to have these little mini goals before I achieve that. Yeah, I think I think it's a fair um, concern. And a lot of people have it. What you're talking about is a north star, right? In, in in how you define it, we can call it definiteness of purpose. We can call it a north star. It's ultimately here's what I see as the ultimate accomplishment in my life. And in the way I look at it, is your north star is always evolving, right? You're always trying to get to a place. What matters is not the um you know the place that you arrive at what matters is the direction you're going along the way if you're heading in the right direction with mini goals and with i have the same problem myself right in, in a perfect world i would be a hundred percent motivational speaker writing books doing podcasts all day going on and doing things like this every day the reality is that i'm the sole breadwinner for my family i work at a fortune 500 company and i i'm a very very i have a lot of responsibilities in my current life so getting here versus where I am today, I need to do things every day that are in alignment with here. So I go on podcasts, I basically produce a video every day, I'm always reading, I'm exercising, I'm doing things that are aligned with being the best version of myself every single day. And that's kind of my daily North Star. But ultimately, I have to take a step back every six months or three months and say, did I accomplish what I wanted to get closer to the bigger North Star, right? If you just think, you know, you can get overwhelmed if you're trying to be this super, you know, high achiever in this space. You know what? There's always room to grow. What's, what's, what's most important is that your daily actions have parts of you that are really going in and, and taking you towards this place that you want to get to versus like, hey, I've arrived. Because you never really do arrive. It's, it's more like I'm in the right direction and I'm doing things that are that are actually making a difference and getting me towards where I want to go versus the opposite. That's the key, right? I, I agree with that 100%. And the reason why I brought that up is because I do see a lot of individuals that do want to win for their lives, for their family. and they, But I keep I don't know, maybe I shouldn't give them advice. I don't look at myself in a position where I could give advice. To but I said, you know, and I, and I did this two days ago, and I said, if you do what you love to do on a daily basis, and you do it because you like it, eventually you're going to attract people that are going to be in line with what you want to do, and the right people are going to come in your life. But you got to do that. So uh, I got a question the other day. And, and somebody said, well, I love your posts. I love it on Instagram. You post a lot of stuff, blah, blah, blah. And I said, I know you love it, but it's not about you. I love it. I put it in. I feel good because if I don't feel good about it and I don't go after it, you're never going to see it. So number one person in my life needs to be me. I need to like it. I need to love it. Some people may not agree with that. Some people may not like that. And that's totally fine. That's yeah. the beautiful part about our country and our society. We're leaning towards that where we have that freedom that I get to choose that. And the people that love that, they're going to come along. The people that don't, they don't. You love doing one-time video. I may like your videos. I may not like your videos. But if I like it, I'm going to start following you and do that. If I don't, I'm going to say, okay, fantastic. I'm going to go focus my time somewhere else. So That's it's right. uh, one of those things that to me is... It's, it just makes sense. You got to love it. You love yeah. doing the videos. It doesn't have to be your wife. It doesn't have to be your kids. It doesn't have to be your company. It has to be you. 
Yeah, and, and that'll shine through too. If you enjoy what you're doing, it, it, people are going to see that and they're going to be attracted to you because they see you're doing it for the right reasons. So one of the affirmations that I say every morning is to lead others effectively, I must first lead myself. Part of the reason I do my videos is as much as I'm coaching or helping other people, I'm also reminding myself of the things that I need to do every day. I think it's a discipline check on ourselves. I think if I post every day and I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing every day, I think I'm keeping that, hey, you know, I got to keep my discipline up. I got to do what I need to do for me first and not just talk about, see, I don't know, we could get into that conversation. There are a lot of phony coaches and phony people. They're 25 years old and they want to become a public speaker. There's nothing yeah. wrong with them. But when I sit in front of you and I'm 38 years old and when you talk, when you coach me on things that you haven't gone and you haven't experienced, I have a challenge with that. I, yeah. I, you know, it's not that I'm, they don't know what they're talking about. I'm more like, you know, you're not married, you don't have children, and you're giving me bullshit advice from sitting in your car, and then you telling me that I should be listening to that. I'm like, I'm, okay, I listen to it. I'm open-minded. But can you tell me a little bit about your background? What have you done? What's your experience? And when you're just talking, are you memorizing a lot of good quotes from a lot of other gurus, and you're just repeating that back because it sounds good? Or do you know from personal experience? So to me, it's like, that's why I'm very, very, you know, a lot of people reach out to me. They're like, oh, can you coach us this? I'm like, I'm not a coach. I could tell you what works for me. And if that works for you, cool. If not, I can't give you advice that I haven't experimented myself and I haven't done. Yeah, I think it's a good point, too. There's a lot of people, like, they're repeating what other people say. They're trying to coach, but they've never done it themselves. The reason I'm interested in kind of being a, a speaker and, and really inspiring people is because I've been selling for 17 years in a B2B space. I sold over $100 million through me and my teams in business to business sales. So I know what works. I've been doing it for a long time. And now it's like I have enough for myself. I have a beautiful multiple houses. I drive the car. I have the family that I want. It's like, okay, what's next? Well, that's when you start to realize, you know what, what's next is giving back. What's next is helping people. What's next is making the world better. You don't have that when you're hustling, when you're trying to just make money and, and establish yourself, right? You can't be in that position to really serve. So how are you going to be able to be 22 and never have experienced anything and be able to serve? I respect people that want to do that. That's great. But you need to be an expert in something and doing something for 17 years straight and doing it successful does make you an expert if you've been able to i mean i've worked at two companies both fortune 500 companies that are multi-billion dollar companies and it's like okay i know what i'm talking about here if someone asks me to coach them on um nutrition i'm not going to be their guy right because you know that's not me if someone wants b2b sales coaching and training or how to establish the right work ethic or, you know, mindset or, or doing the right habits or daily routines all day long, right? So you, you have to be able to be an expert in what you do in your own life, right? Make whatever your story is your message, right? Make your mess your message. Whatever you had to figure out through your failures, through triumphs, tribulations, that is what you should be teaching and focusing on, not just regurgitating other people's content because it sounds good and you want, because otherwise, like when, the rubber meets the road and when you try and get deep, there's not going to be no substance. You're not really going to be able to draw on your own experience because you haven't had any. So I, I agree with you 100% there. I think that, there, and like, who do you listen to, right? Who do you choose to listen to, right? You want to listen to people who've done it before. So it's, it's an interesting time and, and we're in right you now. Say that because when you, when you have a conversation with them, you'll know, like we're intelligent enough. I think everybody's born with the basis intelligent. Like we have enough IQ to detect if this person knows their stuff or not. Now, it might take 20 minutes, 30 minutes. It might take an hour conversation. It might take a couple of conversations. But when someone knows what they're doing, like I tell you what we got. We got a Facebook group going on for ourselves. And we got like, I don't know, something like 4,000, almost 500 people in that group. And the individuals that are putting the content that are part of our platform, you know, they were chosen specifically. They, they, we chose them and they chose us. So it was a mutual relationship, right? There's no monetary compensation going on over there. So when you listen to them, you know, they're exposing themselves. So if these coaches don't know what they're talking about and they're doing weekly and bi-weekly uh, videos on Facebook group for 15 minutes and 20 minutes, let's say Ian just walks into that group you're going to have access to an archive of like maybe 100 videos. 
And during those 100 videos, you're going to see these people, how they interact and what they say on a weekly basis, what they have said for the past four, five, six months, right? You'll right. be able to know if they're bullshitting, if they're saying the right things, what they're saying makes sense, it doesn't make sense, you can apply, you can use, is it useful to you? Because now you have the whole entire history right in front of you. So a person doesn't even need to meet you in real life. They could just go through your content and know if you got it down or you don't. And, and that's the beauty about it. When those people talk, people actually, you know, you don't have to go apply it. But they know that the person is coming from a good place. They know their stuff. And if they did do apply those contents, they will get the outcome that they wanted. They will get the results. Makes sense. So yeah, uh, I'm with you, man. That's great you're doing this. And it's great you're pulling in so many people and that you're so passionate for setting up Napoleon Hill's page and bringing the community together. Kudos to you, Vahid. Definitely. I'm very, very excited because through this, I know a lot of people are coming together, sharing ideas. Um, most probably our next level, what we want to take it to, because with this, I needed to learn. You know, I'm 38. I consider myself one of those uh, older people where Instagram is not second nature to me, you know? You have I'm to 40, actually man. I'm with you I just turned 40 this year, so you're almost, you're almost caught up to me. <laughs> no, it, it's so crazy because when they come up with the updates and I'm all like, oh my God, man, I just had this thing figured out and all of a sudden you do an update. Now I got to go find out what these updates are and what's going on. So it's, uh, Instagram is definitely keeping us on our toes on what we need to do. So I'm very, very excited. Past couple of years has been very exciting. And the reason for that is because now we're impacting a lot of people's lives little by little. We're not making any millionaires. Nobody's becoming billionaires off of it. But on their journey, if they can utilize these contents, at least we had something to do with their success. We're good with that. We don't need to make claims of how many millionaires we produce. We don't need to do that. Yeah. If they're millionaires and they want to let us know, fantastic. If not, hey, use the content, grab what you need, and just go on your way. You don't have to worry about the rest. You don't have to come back, pay anything to anybody. You don't have to thank. Just go and just pay it forward. Help somebody else get the concept and the material. So as you can see, I'm a big fan of thinking grow rich. So what's your biggest lesson? If you were going to summarize what you've gotten out of the book, thinking grow rich, what would you say is the number one thing that you've applied that's, you know? Get off the couch and go to work. Action. <laughs> I noticed that a lot of people say work smart and work hard at the same time, work efficient. But there will be times in your life that the only way you'll be able to compete with other people in your space is if you work hard. There is no substitute for hard work. Now, yeah. at the same time, you got to work smart, intelligent, and efficient, but hard work is there. And, and just so you know, I learn Instagram and social media from 11 p.m. till 1 a.m. Well, That's my time zone. I don't have extra time to give during the day because I'm busy doing stuff, right? So to me, it's like from 11, nobody's bothering me. Kids are asleep. Wife is okay. Watching TV, whatever. I'm cool. I'm on my little couch doing whatever I need to do, study, read, Facebook, yeah. YouTube, all these different, you know, courses that I got to go through. So from 11 to 1, that's the sweet spot. That's where I do the personal growth. That's a that's action right there. You got to take those. And the only way I'm able to catch up with these people that had like 5, 10 years ahead of me on Instagram is, listen, man, when they're sleeping, I'm catching up. Yeah, When they're I sleeping, I'm catching up. On Saturdays when they go party, hey, Vahid is working. On Sundays... Where they're playing around, guess what? I'm putting full day. When I put full day 24 hours, I just caught up to you at least a month. I put 24 hours, it's equivalent to you putting a month. So I keep constantly doing that. Well, after a couple of years, you know, now I'm on the same level. Now I'm like, okay, what's up? What's next? We caught up with this. So it's, it's doing that. Now, I just give you an example of social media, Instagram, because I know a lot of influencers are on it. But that could be the same thing. You want to learn programming. You want to go into selling real estate. You want to be in financial services. You want to be a good auto mechanic. You want to be the best attorney. You want to be the best CPA. My wife is an attorney. I've seen, you know, her friends where literally they go, you know, 24, 32 hours without sleeping. They get things done. They study. They, 
They read the materials. I mean, this is it. Welcome to the club. Your competition is trying to put you out of business on an hourly basis. If you don't get that, I mean, you're not in business. If you're not getting punches and people are not coming after you, what, I mean, that means you're not doing it good enough. Yeah, <laughs> what, you're, what you're saying, what you're saying now is is um, tried and true for me too. It's it's always work on yourself every day, and then and then like installing the work ethic. I think there's just a lot of people that haven't paid their dues, right? I I when I started out in sales. You know, I, I had to make a certain amount of money in a very short amount of time because I literally was was I was in love with someone who lived in South America and I wanted to bring her here and put her through college at 23 years old. I had to save up and make at least save twenty thousand dollars. I had no sales experience. I had no money. I was living with my parents. So I'm like, I need to get the hell out of here within a year and put her through college and support both of us. So that forces you to work hard. So it was like every single day I was cold calling up and down the streets of Koreatown getting thrown out of buildings and I didn't have a choice, right? I feel like until you have actually like paid your dues, cut your teeth, really, really like put in the work, like you're not going to know what it means to like work hard, right? You're talking about this as a lifetime. It starts with like having a strong reason why. I had to. Love is a powerful force, right? If you feel like you can't be with the person you love because you don't have money, you're going to figure out a way to get money and get her to this country. So I was fortunate to be in that situation where I had to do it. But I, I, I feel like just there's a lot of people that don't know what hard work really looks like. And my hard work is very different now, right? It's, it's not about working hard on my business every day. It's working hard in life. So it's working hard on my marriage, working hard on being a good father, working hard on actually um, going in and, and making sure that I am 100% dedicated to, um, you know, my all things that I'm doing when I'm working out, right? It's, it's, it's not like hard work is a mindset of, I'm not sitting on the couch. I'm not sitting on Netflix. I'm not sitting on social media. I'm doing something productive for most of the day. Now, there are times you can chill out and you can tune out, but it's just an installed mindset of, you know, if I'm not doing this, I'm doing that. I'm paying a bill. I'm going, you know, to, to you know, I'm accomplishing something. That's just the reality. It's not, it's not like I'm on here and then I'm off here, right? You're always on. It's just a mindset, right? So I, I feel like in order to get that, you need to put yourself through a little bit of hell. You need to put yourself through, um, you know, some some struggle and pain, and then you'll know what it means when you're, you know, successful. That feels that much better. So I, I like I like that you've kept that. I agree with that one hundred percent. If you don't put in the work, it just doesn't work. I tell you a story how excited I was when I moved out. You were living at home. I think I was. I want to say I was twenty. 221 or whatever i think it was 21 i was living with my sister and my 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 my, my mom and you know i opened an auto repair shop and i wanted to do that and i was so excited and the distance was killing me just driving an hour from the valley going all the way down to west la it was just killing me so i got excited there was an apartment for rent i went on you know shopped around i wanted to get it the guy had five other applications ahead of me Right. And I said, how much is the rent? And the guy says, you know, it's $900. I said, what if I give you a thousand dollars? He's like, well, I got five applications. I can't get rid of those, those applications. And I already knew, I already knew that my application at that age wasn't going to go through. So I already knew that. So what I did is I went and I said, you know what? I'm going to pay you a thousand dollars, but I'm going to make it sweeter for you. I'm going to pay you three months out front and I'm going to give you a cashier's check today. And he's like, well, where is your shop at? Where is your business? I was like, listen, I'm down the block. Just come to me there with the bank. Get rid of those applications. I, I raised the rent on myself on my first apartment. But I tell you what I did. I was so excited to move in. I literally moved in with no couch, no bed, no mattress, <laughs> no feet, no nothing. So I took shower. I slept on the floor for three days. And I took shower with cold water for three days. That's how excited I was. Because I was going to save two hours a day so I could go back to my work. So I could get you know, work on my craft. So I didn't need to deal with the traffic. So was it a sacrifice? I don't look at it as a sacrifice. I looked at it as I made a conscious decision. It was a choice for me to sleep on the floor because it was going to give me an extra an hour or two a day so I could work on my craft. And let me tell you what I mean by that. If there is a car I can't fix, it needs to go to junkyard. That's how I... That's how I did my craft. If I can't fix it, it, it's not fixable. Simple. So 
And you got to think about it. I went into it. My employees were three times as old as I was. And I was telling them how to fix cars. It wasn't because I was any smarter. It was because I was reading, watching, experimenting constantly. And I was not afraid of messing up. And I would owe up to it where I said, hey, we messed up. It didn't get fixed. Why don't you leave it right here? Here is a loaner car. You go do what you need to do till we get a fix. We're not letting this thing go out unless it's done the right way. Everybody loved it. Everybody got attracted. And I made shit ton of money, man. I made so much money. It was ridiculous. I was killing it. And I was in my young age. So to me, it has nothing to do with age. It has nothing to do with your language, with your skills, with your IQ, nothing. If there is a will, there is a way. But there is a, there is a, there is a second phase to that. A lot of times, a lot of individuals' wills have gone to the gutter. A lot of times we get beat up by our bosses, by our jobs, by our school system, by our family, negative thoughts, negative people around us, where we lose our goals and dreams. Now we don't want to fight for them no more. So in order to get back, that feeling is an inside job, not an outside job. A lot of people are looking at the glamorous, the cars, the house, all of that stuff. It yeah. don't mean anything. You were the one that put in the work to be able to buy that house. Yeah. So for me, that wants the house, I need to go see what you have done, not the house. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. It's, it's, if you measure yourself by external pursuits, you're never going to be happy, right? Because ultimately, um, you can keep getting more and more and more, and you're just filling a void. But ultimately, it's the person that you are and the impact that you leave that, that makes a difference. So I think that being resourceful, that being resourceful with what you got. It, becoming rich has nothing to do with how much money you got. It helps if you start with initial investment, but even if you don't have it, it still don't matter. You just got to be resourceful. If you're resourceful enough, it might take you a little bit longer, but you'll eventually get to your outcome that you like to get. And you got to be patient, man. You got to be patient. You got to take some punches in the face. If there's nothing wrong with that, you got to go through the valleys and the hills of life. If you don't go to valleys, you won't appreciate the hills. If you don't, you know, if you haven't experimented and get to the hills, you don't know what it takes in the valley. So, it's, yeah, it's and, and failure. Things. Failure is is when I sold my biggest deal. My biggest deal. It was a contract that was worth. Um, it was about twelve million dollars, and I sold the contract literally a few months after I lost my biggest deal, and I was so defeated, and I was like, you know, I felt so miserable. But I'm like, you know what? It, it's not how hard you fall, it's how fast you get back up. And I got back up fast. And I said, you know what? I believe in myself. You have to have this unwavering belief in yourself to be able to get back up quickly. And I think the more you fail and the more you ultimately learn from your failures, the, the more um, easy it is to get back up. Because it, the failure is just, it, it, failures, there's no such thing as failure, right? Failure is when you stop and when you give up. That's failure, right? But, but, obstacles are just things that you encounter along the way so losing a big deal that's an obstacle to you know financial success or you know overachievement in, in in sales but ultimately um unless you've like been rejected unless you've really like you know you can't get better if you're not failing you can't learn if you're not like doing right so the experience of getting up and doing the job and saying, you know what, it doesn't need to be perfect. I don't need to be perfect. I don't need to know everything. I just need to do like that. Learning is 10 X or 20 times more important than what you'll learn in a book or preparing or studying, doing the job and learning from your mistakes is how you get confident, right? Is by, by doing right. If you're going to work out, you can read everything about it and, and, and try and do it perfect. Or you can just do it. And if your back hurts, you're doing it wrong. So you better adjust your form, right? Or if you get really tired because you ran five miles, you know that you need to keep on running and then it becomes easier. It's the same thing with, with business and in any any job you learn by doing. It's just it's just a fact. There's no no nothing else to it. And so people say, How do you believe in yourself, Ian? Why do you why are you so confident? It's because I've been through hell and back many, many times and I've come out better every time for it. So you just need to realize like it's the people that stop or that can't get up or they they just get stuck in in their failures those are the ones that are struggling the most with with um 
you know, life, lifetime success because they, they don't get back up. You always just got to keep moving. There's no, there's no such thing as failure if, if you're not stopping is what I'm trying to say. So. I agree with you 100%. Ian, I want to thank you so much for spending this time with us this morning. Hopefully we get to do more with you. If there's anything you need, just send a DM. Me and my team will definitely reach out. We should do a lot more, especially just because you're local. I appreciate Absolutely, you man. And for anyone video. watching this, hop on my Instagram. Every day I post a video, and you guys can see a daily motivational video. And uh, I'm doing that for a year straight. It's been five and a half months, and it is a commitment, and it's an exercise and discipline, to your point. So halfway there, and, and we got over you know, six months of videos left. So keep going. I'll see you guys. Good Take job, care. Ian. Thank you, yeah. buddy. Keep it up. Bye-bye. Take care.